Displaying relative time values is now part of the Intel API. You can specify which side of the text underline should appear on for text that flows vertically, and fewer surprises. I'm Pete LePage. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 71. Many web apps use phrases like yesterday, in two days, or an hour ago to indicate when something happened or is going to happen, instead of displaying the full date and time. Displaying relative times has become so common that most date time libraries provide localized functions to handle this for us. In fact, with almost every web app I build, Moment.js is one of the first libraries I add expressly for this purpose. Chrome 71 introduces Intel.RelativeTime format, which shifts the work to the JavaScript engine and enables localized formatting of relative times. This can give us a small performance boost and means we only need those libraries as a polyfill when the browser doesn't support the new APIs yet. Using it is simple. Create a new instance and specify the locale, then just call format with the relative time. Check out Matthias's updates post linked below. When Chinese or Japanese text is displayed in a vertical flow, browsers are inconsistent with where the underline is placed. It may be on the left or on the right. In Chrome 71, the text underline position property now accepts left or right as part of the CSS3 text decoration spec. The CSS3 text decoration spec adds several new properties that allow you to specify things like what kind of line to use, the style, the color, and position. We've all been surprised when we hit a site and suddenly it starts talking to us. Autoplay policies prevent sites from automatically playing audio. These sites use the Speech Synthesis API instead. Starting in Chrome 71, the Speech Synthesis API now requires some kind of user activation on the page before it'll work. This brings it in line with other autoplay policies. If you try and use it before the user has interacted with the page, it'll fire an error. There's nothing worse than going to a site and having it surprise you and the coworkers sitting around you. These are just a few of the changes in Chrome 71 for developers. Of course, there's plenty more. The element.request full screen method can now be customized on Android. The default credential mode for module script requests has changed from omit to same origin. And bringing Chrome in line with the Shadow DOM v1 spec, Chrome 71 now calculates the specificity for host, host context, and slotted elements. If you didn't make it to Chrome Dev Summit, or maybe you did, but you didn't see all the talks, check out the Chrome Dev Summit 2018 playlist on our YouTube channel. Ava and Phil went into some neat techniques for using service workers. Mariko and Jake talked about how they built Squoosh. Katie and Hussein covered some great techniques to maximize the performance of your site. And of course, there are plenty more, so check them out. Oh, and click that subscription button. You'll get an email notification whenever we launch a new video. I'm Pete LePage, and as soon as Chrome 72 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome. <laughs>